This week, David Fisdale was introduced as Nick's coach. Me and my man Nick J. Ellis from the Nick of Time Show give you our takeaways from David Fisdale's first week. Station, what's good? It's your boy CP, the NY Fanatic. My man J. Ellis from the Nick of Time Show on the other side. This is the Post Game Live podcast. I know in the, in the past, y'all seen us together on the Post Game Live streams. We're going to continue to do that. We definitely appreciate the support. If this is your first time watching and you're a diehard Knicks fan who likes Knicks news, Knicks rumors, and post-game live streams featuring live callers with fellow Knicks fans, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. I'm going to have the subscribe button for both shows, Nick of Time Show and Knicks Fan TV, in the description below. So hit that below, hit the subscribe button. Most importantly, hit that notification bell too, because if you don't hit the notification bell, you won't know when the live streams are happening as they happen. So Thanks. very important to hit that bell, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and um, yeah, let's let's get it going. So, Jay, man, if the first week of Fizdale yeah. press conference was earlier this week, this past Tuesday, we had the three brother triumphant. The first time yeah, we had a black president, a black GM, and a black head coach together. We're kind of forever, man. We're kind of forever. We're kind of forever, baby. We in here. We in, here. <laughs> we in there. We in there, man. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, it, it was good to see that, you know, as African American, it, it's good to see us, you know, continuing to break barriers in, in industries, especially sports. But yeah, it was it was nice to see that. But um, you know, more importantly, going into the Fisdale press conference, right off the bat, we, you know, he had us all cracking up when he went right at Moutier. You know, oh yeah. You can tell he's a little nervous. He's like, yo, yeah, boy, yeah. we, we got to get you right, kid. We got to get you right. Yeah, kid. man. Get him right. Straight off the jump. I yeah. like it. That, that should have you crack it up, man. But, you know, my take for the press conference was, um, you know, he, he he played the whole political role when, when asked questions about, you know, going to see KP. They asked him about the nose situation. They asked him, you know, what he thought about the roster. Um, we, we keep hearing this theme about positionless basketball. We keep Word. hearing this theme about positionless basketball, and and he said that from the press conference straight through to all the press tours that he went on. So it's going to be interesting to see what he really, really thinks about, um, you know, especially our guards and and how he goes forward in, in trying to develop some of these guys. Almost oh, definitely, most definitely, I, I agree with you, everything you just said. Um, but my first thoughts on him, just without even getting into like specifics and basketball, I just like the feeling of of his arrival compared to, you know, everybody else's, it, it just felt. Felt like, right, man. Yeah, this it felt one, right, man. Really good feeling. Yeah, it felt right. It felt real. It felt like he was engaged. It felt like he was able to connect with the people in front of him in the audience. Um, You, you kind of feel like he's like a leader for real. And without even involving X's and O's and strategies, strategies and things, I, I seem like he can just kind of bring people together for like a common goal. He's a good salesman, man. He's a good salesman. Yeah. But what also I liked, I liked the approach that our uh, our, our Wakanda team um kind of took took the things. Like they really did their homework. Yeah. It was apparent. Um they they interviewed eleven coaches. A thorough it was a thorough search, man. Very thorough search. It was not a Phil Jackson thing where he was falling asleep during meetings and having everybody else do something. No, he they were involved. Um, you found out during the press conference that they called Pat Riley and yeah. were talking to him. Yo, cra- that shit was <laughs> crazy, bro. Like, what? when I heard that, I was like, Pat the Rat is really trying to help the Knicks? This that, is... That shit caught me off guard, man. But that, Way that was respect, off guard. Man. That was, that I'm was like, respect. I still hate him, though. Well, that was respect. <laughs> Fuck Pat Riley. Fuck Miami Heat forever. Uh, but, you know, listen, man. It, it was it was good to hear. It, it was good to hear. And and I said in a, in a previous um previous video that you know Fisdale coming from that Riley coaching tree, um, it, it's a it's a commitment to excellence. It's a commitment Definitely. to defense. And you heard that, you know, and you conditioning, that. conditioning. Mm-hmm. Moody, that, that's what he yet. preached. That, yeah, facts. <laughs> that's why he aired out Moody quickly because yeah. I still can't understand how you're 21 years old and go through a whole NBA season and everybody from your old coach, your new coach, your old coach and Larry Brown and the new coach and Dave Fisdale is all saying you was out of shape. Uh, Perry was saying he was out of shape. Like, I, I just don't get it. But 
Uh, he gonna learn. He gonna, gonna learn. learn. He gonna learn he gonna today. Learn today. He, he gonna what's... learn today. But um, yeah, you know that 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 Riley way of doing things, man. Uh, that's what we need, and that's why, like, like we, me and you talked about. It. That's why I wanted Van Gundy, but yeah. um, as my first choice. But so I I can't argue with Fizdale as a second choice because he Hell understands nah. that culture, and uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be good to see, man. Yeah, he understands that culture, and a lot of the guys on the Knicks seem very excited about his arrival. Tweets were flying everywhere. Take that for data tweets from Tim Hardaway back, Jr. Back. He's Cantor is hyped. Cantor was optimistic, even though we want him going. I, I, I'm, I'm not way. saying we like that. I know you will. I, I'm on the fence on that. You know I'm a Cantor fan, but that's that's a whole other issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother that's issue, a whole other that's a whole nother show whole nother <laughs> issue man so um what else they they touched on the noah thing and 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 what he's gonna do with noah Word. Um, basically the response was this a fluid situation we're gonna see all options is on the table i mean me personally bro I've, I've been saying this to you all year uh i thought noah could have helped us at in times last year and i think he could still help us this year you most know. definitely man there was I'm not saying he should have been playing 30 minutes a game, but because you know we had a glut at that big man spot, but there yes. were certain times during the year when we had injuries, where we had defensive lapses, and you have this guy who was known for defense on the bench inject them in there for some for some energy, man. Right. Especially there was, was a time when he he did pretty well playing versus the Pelicans. Pelicans, he, Pelicans. I mean, Boogie yeah. was going at it. I mean, Boogie was going at it for sure. He drove him crazy now because now he has the Hulk Hogan blonde beard. But hopefully, Yo, my man went to the Amazon. He was yeah, exiled man. into the Amazon after Jeff Hornacek mushed him out of practice, exiled him into Amazon on the, all this job blessing and Word, spiritual man. awakening. Bro, Listen, you man, get back here for camp and be in shape. You had all year and last year after he was on them damn steroids to get in shape. Let's go. I mean, I look. feel like he'll be in shape. I mean, I feel like he. I feel like he is, man. I kind of feel like. I mean, he, he saw, he came back, he had 27 abs last summer when he came back from the steroids and stuff. Yo, that was the steroids, man. Don't let that fool <laughs> That was on that HGH. He, yeah, he, he, I don't know. I think some of it, he has long-lasting effects. I think the abs are still there. Yeah, even the boy knows on that, that LeBron. I already know LeBron got that prescription, bro. It's going to come out sooner or later. Le- LeBron, in that, he, he on that TB12 laboratory shit, man. I yeah, know, man. I know. I know. I might, as much as, you know, I'm not a LeBron fan, I might have to get those, though. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. But, but yeah, well, I mean, with the no shit, yo, it's, it's a realistic possibility that we could be down two big men, three big men when you count KP injury. Um, you know, KO is going to opt out. He, uh, rightfully so. He deserves a raise. Whether it's right. here or not, we'll see. Um, because it seemed like these guys want to get under the cap. And then the Canada situation. You know, uh, Steve Mills was basically asked this week, like, What's going on with that? And basically, he was like, "Yo, the ball is in his court." Opt yeah, in. he can yeah, opt, in, or opt in. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't say opt in or get out, but but he pretty much said it. He said it, but he didn't say it. You, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll reach that gap. We'll reach, reach that bridge when we get there. Yeah. But but um, overall though, I. I kind of feel I like that Fizdale as a development coach. I feel like he's gonna get these guys on the right track, get them in shape, get them playing defense. Yeah, and it's going to just carry over that throughout. accountability. That yes, accountability, that, yes, the accountability that that Jeff never really yeah, had man. going for Tell him. You, man, these guys, he's gonna have these guys running through walls. Sure. Man, he's gonna have and, these guys running through walls. And I still feel like the Beasley haters out there, Beasley under Fizdale, I feel like it's gonna be nice. My personal opinion, but that's another show as well. I, you know what? I, you know, like I say, just don't overpay for him. I don't I don't know. What's the market really going to be for Beasley? What's the market really going to be for Beasley? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. But it's like, that's a whole nother show. Like, really, the Cantor thing is going to be like a domino effect of what happens next and who has what yeah. money. Yeah. Because I know this is not on the, on the topic, but really, if Cantor's opts out, you have more options. If Cantor opts in, then we have to keep KO. And then I know Beasley might want more money, but he would ha- yeah, probably have to. Re- yeah, it's like I don't see it's, it's three of them. It's, it's gonna it, be either yeah, one out of three, it, it, two. It might be. A, it might exactly. It might have to make a choice. It might have to make a hard decision at that. Make a choice because I don't think Dolan ain't gonna pay the luxury tax and go over the cap for a team that's that's gonna be dead ass. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, I think because yeah, they are gonna try to get under that cap, and that's why they was like with Canada. Basically, they like will let you rock for another year. Yeah, 
after that. You know what I'm saying? But if you opt out, you, you're on your own, pal. Straight up. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up, man. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? But um, but back to Fizdale. So, you know, he, he went on his, uh, his media circuit. Mm -hmm. Went on with the Pope, Mike Francesa. You know what I'm saying? And um, one of the things that, that I like what he said was um, in terms of what the fans can expect, he, he say you could expect some toughness, um, conditioning, hardworking, right. high character guys. That's what he wants to bring in here. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he, he keeps going by that theme. You know, actions is, is going to speak louder. But like I said, I feel like I'm comfortable with his approach. And I'm comfortable with management's approach in letting him work. They got to let him work, man. Let him do his thing. You got to bring the pieces around him, but let him do his job. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. And I think what's going to work with this, they seem to be on the same page this time. Yeah. They seem definitely seem to be on the same page. They were all same page to position this basketball, which is why they even got Moody in the first place. Facts. When all the Knicks fans was like, what the hell? Why are we, why are we getting another point guard? Facts, but facts. they all seem to be on the same pace, and I think it's gonna. Hopefully, it works out. I hope so. I hope so, man. I just think I just think this management is just seeing that the old way is not working. We, yo, we haven't. We won one playoff series in the last twenty some odd years, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's bad, bro. It's bad. Hey, hey you know what? That's a, that's another thing they actually um they kind of uh they em emphasized during the press conference was. They are not into the, the quick fixes this season. Can't so we can't do it. We're not going to be trading half the team in our assets for a free agency market. I don't think that's going to happen. So nah. the Kawhi Leonard dreams, that's not happening. Anybody on the list, that's not. No, we're, we're keeping our assets this time. We're going to try to build slowly. Nah. Not going to miss any steps. We're going to go from the ground up. And once we, you know, and once we get all the assets we need, then we'll start to maybe even look for some trades a la the Boston Celtics or facts, something like facts, that. Facts. Um, one thing I'm going to be curious though with Fizdale, see on, see on this, on this press tour what, in his first week, he's going to be the politician. He's going to say, I love this guy. I love that guy. Oh yeah. You know, he, he compared Lance to Draymond. I mean, people got up in arms. You yeah. Can't, you can't that shit, man. He, Listen, come, man. he compared Moody. He said Moody got D Wade potential and all this shit. Like, nah, we know we know that's that that's just talking. You know what I'm saying? And listen, any coach should, should want to motivate his players. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Yeah, I'm for I'm for gassing all of them. I'm for all that. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. for. It's, it's, I mean, as, as motivation. As a, yeah, as a viewer, we are. Right. Come on, but you know, I'm for I'm for the gas. Facts. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm for the gas. <laughs> you know what I'm motivate saying? them. So. Motivate. Yeah. But but really though, you know, it is really most importantly is Frank and and. How does he view Frank? You know, we're talking about positionless basketball. Mm -hmm. I said to you a lot of times, like, if Frank don't crack the, the point guard's position, he's going to be coming off the bench. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we use him because I feel he's too viable defensively to just have him rotting over there. Facts. Man. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's going to be our best perimeter defender. Yeah. So it's like, it's a conundrum, really, because it's like, do you put – Timmy at the three to just to slot Frank in at, at, at one of the guard positions. Yeah, there's like a whole there's a there's a whole mess of problems with this roster when it comes to the balance, the the scoring, the defense. That's like all right, like you paying Hardaway seventy two million dollars. So he's gonna think, start. I think he has to start. But I, but you're like, well, maybe, but then you also start to think, well, maybe he's better off the bench, but then where is the score going to come from in the first unit? It's, a conundrum. it's like, it's a conundrum. lot of balance issues yeah. mixed and, and with, yeah, it's a lot of things to work out. That's with. why the Frank thing is just so intriguing to me. And Fisdale went on the Get Up show on ESPN, and here's what he had to say about Frank. And it's been a strong rookie class, and a lot of people felt like maybe the Knicks didn't take the right choice in Nila Kita. What do you see for him as it relates to a prospect? I see a possibility with a two-way player. Um, the kid takes real pride in defending. He's got big-time wingspan. He's a combo guard. Um, I think we get him to where he's knocking down that three ball every single time, feet set. His shot's already looking pretty good. Um, I think he's a little too unselfish. Um, but, again, I think he has that competitive streak that I really like. That's all I keep hearing about him from the people in the organization, uh, from his teammates. So... 
I'm really looking forward to coaching this kid and, and seeing where we can get him. So, I mean, Fisdale is talking him up. I, I think it's just so crazy with this Frank situation because I feel like in the beginning, the organization, I really feel like that's what got Frank, um, got Phil Jackson fired because I really think, and, and Alan Hahn had alluded to it, I think Mills and them really wanted Mitchell. And I think Phil was, was gun-ho on this Frank pick from the triangle nah. perspective. Well, I mean, what you, what you, you disagree with that? Nah, what got Phil Jackson fired was he was trying to um, let Melo out of his contract without getting any trade assets. So you think you think it was you think it was the Melo situation that got no, right? it was the it, Porzingis situation that got yeah, it was definitely it was it was definitely the the Melo situation. That's what yeah. I, I read. It was yeah. like he was trying to get Melo out of here by, by any means necessary, and he and he was trying to he was going to let Melo out of his contract and get nothing in return. Right, right, and, and then. Yeah, Dolan was like, oh, hell nah, put a stop to that. And then, thankfully, we got yeah. something in return. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it was a comedy of errors that, that got Phil ousted out of here, and rightfully so. Yeah. But on the Frank thing, I, I look at it as I really do think most people in the organization were leading Donovan Mitchell. Um, Phil chooses Frank, I think, mainly because he he he, he found him to, to fit the triangle that he was forcing on, on this whole organization for the past three years. And now it's like, well... We've seen that this kid has a potential, especially on the defensive end. Um, what now? You know what I'm saying? And, and that's going to be the elephant in the room. It's like, is Ken Fisdale really help propel this kid, on, especially on the offensive side, where he's really going to lift this team? Like, what is Frank going to be? I have, I have complete and utter confidence that Frank is going to develop into something, man. I just... I mean, I kind of been reading little reports here and there that saying he's already working out like two or three days after the last game of the season. He's already in France, lifting weights, playing ball, hanging with his family, and he's gonna be back um, working out in New York very soon yeah. to meet after yeah, he meets Chris Fisdale. Brickley and them. Yeah, yeah. Black so ops. Frank, man, he he's a hard worker, man. If you haven't read Frank's bio and his story, you already know he he has that hard work. Um, that hard work mentality ingrained in his his whole being and his family. Yeah. And with D- Fizdale pushing him, I think he's gonna be fine, man. I'm not worried about yeah. Frank. Well, I think I think he's gonna be great defensively. I, I think he's he's gonna be even better. I mean, at 19 years old, to be one of the top pick and roll defenders in the league. Oh yeah. I mean, pick and roll defense is, is a huge weakness league wide. It ain't just yeah. a hard team. You he beat out Drew saying? Holiday, and Drew. You saw what Drew Holiday Drew was Holiday doing. Holiday ate up Damian Lillard. Man. Exactly. So imagine, so imagine you have a, a defensive system in New York that yeah. can actually hold people Fact. accountable with somebody like Frank, um, shutting down people on the pick and roll. Yeah. Facts. 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 So on the Frank thing, let, let, let's hope he um gets his development up this summer. And like I said, we'll see how it plays out. But then it's like. In all these mock drafts, and you know, you take these mock drafts with a grain of salt, but then you see in Colin Sexton. So it's mm-hmm. like, on one hand, you know, they interviewed um, Steve Mills during the, after the press conference, and Mills was like, well, uh, obviously we want to get more athletic, but we lean in more towards the wing. Right. Perry goes on with Alan Hahn, and he's like, well, we're going to go best player available, basically, right. so to speak. So yeah. it's, it's, it's hard to get, and then, then now you have Fisdale coming in. What does Fisdale think of the guard lineup now? What does Fisdale think in terms of um, – you know, the draft strategy, you know, all that shit comes into play, man. Yeah, definitely. He just, Fizzle don't want no cupcakes. That's all, that's no all. Cupcakes. On his mind. <laughs> no softies on this team, no, man. Yeah, no cupcakes. No softies, man. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. No, it, no it's, it's going to be interesting, it's interesting to see which direction they go in once the lottery balls settle and, and we, we have an idea of the prospects of where we're going to pick. Word. Hopefully we Frank, move up. Frank is going to be okay, man. He just got to be... He's going to get that work in this summer, work on his body. He's going to be working on his little twitch muscles so he can be more athletic. Yeah. He needs to, His jump shot is already there. He's shooting like 35% off the rip from three-point line, which is like league, like league average already. He's going to be fine, man. Just, you know, shoot that jump a little faster. Be aggressive. Nice. Like towards like how you're doing towards the end of the season when he was chucking. I like I like Frank chucking sometimes. And he'll be all right. True I'm, that. I'm, true that. <laughs> true that. Now, the other elephant in the room, obviously, this year is, is going to be the whole KP situation, man. Yeah, man. 
you know, you know how we have a tendency for drama and this thing is starting to, I feel like it is starting to, you know, when the kettle start to boil a little bit, like you start hearing that, you know what I mean? Little by little by little by little. I think it, it, it's, it's starting to heat up. You know what I'm saying? It's starting to heat up. A lot of people is like, well, you know, KP didn't say nothing about Fisdale. He didn't endorse the Fisdale hire. What's nope. going on? He's been quiet. He in Latvia right now, busting down Latvian unicorns and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, KP yeah, just man. at home chilling. So, I I don't know. You know, they say he's supposed to go to Latvia. To, um, David is supposed to go to Latvia to go check for Zingas. But um, what, what's your take on, on that whole situation? Man, it's like you. I I think you said it was a, a chess game because of the re up. Yeah. But um, I'm treading lightly. I'm hoping that we be able to resign him. We don't piss him off. Um, I do love that. I feel like we have Scott Perry here, who is a lot more approachable, and engaging than Phil Jackson. So sure. whatever things that. You know, any problem Phil and KP had, I don't think they're going to have a Perry. I just don't see it. I just don't. True, true. Um, also, side note, the, uh, the, made, the reason why Fizzil was fired from the Grizzlies was because of his relationship with Marcus Gasol. Um, he got this job because he got in front of that when it came time to be interviewed by Perry and said, you know why I own my portion of what he owned it. He owned it. I yeah. Like to see that. You like to see yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. He, asked, he said he owned what he did wrong. He actually took like leadership courses and, or yeah. he, that's real. He found out what leader. That's, yeah. That's like real. he really, he really tried to work on his, on his weaknesses, which yeah. I absolutely love. And he's making it a point to, Establish a relationship with KP early on, so I feel like, like I'm a little nervous. But the people that we have in place at the top right now, right. and where they at in their career, I feel like if there is a glimmer of hope to kind of like ease ease it over a little bit and talk to them and get KP right, I think we have the right people. Yeah, in place. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I said. You know, when people was like, well. Why isn't KP, you know, endorsing the coach? I, I think his brother's in his ear right now. I think it's a chess match on many That's different levels. You know, number one, he wants that bag. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? He wants that bag. He wants about that extension this summer. This summer. Um, I think the Knicks would rather wait until next summer. Um, number one, because as we've, re- as we've read, it could save them $10 million in cap. And also, they want to see how he's going to come back from that leg. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you would assume that he should be all right, but you just don't know with with ACLs, man. Um, Look at guys like Jabari Parker. Look at guys like even Westbrook earlier in his career. Derrick Rose, you know, I mean, he's a one-off situation, but um, it's a chess match. And, and, you know, Phil rubbed them the wrong way in Porzingis' camp. Mm Mm-hmm. Hornacek rubbed them the wrong way. Word and a lot of rubbing and a lot so, of wrong. Yo, it's a lot of fences. <laughs> it's a lot of fences that gotta be mended. And I think, like I said, I think KP is playing it all coy. He don't want to be all buddy buddy with the coach or endorse a coaching move because he doesn't want to commit to the team right now, at least on paper. Nope. So you know, his brother said it. He said winning is is gonna trump everything. Even though I think money talks, that's always been my my motto. It's it's gonna be interesting, man. But um. It depends on the person, man. Some like some yeah. people really like go after the bag, and some people Facts. really like you know, really go after the situation. I feel like there was a time even Lance Thomas could have left. I feel like Lance Thomas, the time when we resigned him, I felt like he might have been able to get a couple more dollars somewhere else because he had a good year, and but he wanted to stay in New York. So it's not always about the money. Some people do take the money. That's Facts. for damn sure. Facts. Facts. Typically young. Typically younger players. Facts. Um, it, it's gonna be interesting, man. And I, I give credit to Fisdale. He wants to jump out ahead of it and get out there, probably explain himself with the Marcus Saul situation. And, hell yeah! Um, build that bridge early. Build that bridge yeah. early with KP and go talk. Word, to him. man. Let him know we want him to be the franchise and all of that, and you know, rub his ego and all of that. You know what I'm saying, man? So, Word. So, Good move. Calling him the megastar on live, on television. Let's do it. Good let's move. Do it. I mean, he's actually. I feel like it's true, but still. Facts. Let him know facts. he's behind. Let him know that you behind him. That's facts, sure. facts. So let, let's go to this cut. Um, Fizdale was also on the Get Up show, and they asked him about his relationship with uh, with KP or what it could potentially be. Um, let's hear what Fizdale had to say about that. Hopefully, okay. it works out. 
What about Porzingis? I know you're excited about Coach. Oh, my goodness. I'm just so sad that he's hurt, you know. But I, I have to be patient for that one. But, you know, it's 7-1, does everything, ultra competitor, uh, big-time worker. You know, I, I just hope I can add to his game, uh, put him in positions to be, you know, an MVP candidate, uh, if not the MVP, um, defensive player of the year candidate, if not the defensive player of the year. I'm asking him <laughs> to do everything. Mm -hmm, no doubt. Uh, but that's what mega stars do. So, you know, mm. he, he said he, he's going to push him. He's going to push him to the limits, but that's what the stars do. So, you know, I, you can't fall Fisdale there. I think he's saying all the right things. As he should. Let's, let's see if KP buys in, man. Most definitely, man. Uh, I think Fisdale can do it too, man. Um, he, he, Fisdale has that, that Fisdale has a reputation of developing, developing guys. And KP is a perfect person to develop. He improved. Gasol's and Conley's numbers, I believe, under his tenure, has been shooting more threes. So, I mean, why not have, not not do the same thing for, for KP? I can, KP. I'll be, yeah, I'll be excited. I'm Facts. really what, excited. What's your take? Um, the, uh, another interesting debate I've seen a lot of people uh, and a lot of people leaving comments um, on, on the Instagram and YouTube and the social media circuits. What, what's your take on KP potentially playing a five? I see a lot of people advocating, mm. especially McCann on the way out. A lot of people saying, well, he blocks KP at the five, this and the third. What, what's your, what you think about that? Um, I've, in, terms I've of, in terms of full-time minutes, like you really think KP can handle the five at full-time? No. That, that's I my thing. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so, man. I know statistically it makes sense for him to be at the five because his strength is blocking shots. He's like number, I think he was number one or close to number one in the NBA in blocking shots 10 feet at the end. And for you to be 10 feet in, it would be better if you were closer to the basket, right? True. Two, he is a four, but he's had problems guarding fours his whole career. True. Um, closing out on the shooter. I actually felt like he took a couple of steps last season. Um, towards trending right on guarding the, the four a little bit better, but um, he, that still could be you know a little bit better as well. It's hard to kind of to guard stretch fours and be there to help. So um, the paint. yeah, that's true too. Paint. That's true too. So uh, I tough. don't. It's, not, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. Tough situation yeah, like you, you you do that by case by case basis, yeah. man. Sometimes I, I feel. I that's why yeah. I say I, I think it's a situational thing. I think it also depends on if Canna walks, um, do we get someone do we do we have a shot at a Mo Bamba if we crack the top five? Do we do we get somebody in the second round? Um, you know, a, a more uh rugged power forward that can help do the rebound. Cause me, my thing with KP playing at the five is like offensively, who's rebounding? You, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Who's going to rebound? So I think it's a lot of different ways you could look at it. Sure, at the five um, in, in spurts, he could he could be tremendous, um, uh, have a tremendous advantage. But I'm not sure if it's a full, if it's something we want to do full time. I don't I don't know. I feel you. I mean, I kind of feel like if it's a situation, if he's at the five, you put KO at the four. That's how I think yeah, about it. Starting anyway. though, I don't know. I like KO as I like KO as his role as as the backup general I for that it. second unit. I understand. I'm, and I'm only thinking about that if cancer opts out. I mean, yeah, yeah, but um, it's. I understand though. Uh, it's, it's it's a lot. To, it's a lot to think through. It's a it's lot, a lot to, to digest, man. But hey, it's still early. Off season just shaping up. Let's see what happens, man. But I think it was a first successful first week for David Fisdale. Yeah, man. Got all over the place. The media circuit. If you wanted Dave Dave Fisdale facts and news and. And all little tidbits about reads. how yeah, there's a lot, a lot, lot, a lot reads, out there. Man. Facts, facts. Real quick on the second topic, it looks like um, we're hearing some rumors about the coaching staff being shaped up. We're hearing yep. names like Nick Van Exel could be returning to Fisdale's side. Um, Keith Smart, we heard about Keith Smart's name a couple weeks ago. They even mm -hmm. said maybe Howard Isley might come back. Or, I don't know, I don't bring know back Howard. Keith, how how Howard Isley still got the address to Madison Square Garden after he he robbed us of all that money back in the day? Uh, I mean, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna bring back Shannon Anderson as a strength and conditioning coach? Knicks though? legend Shannon Anderson definitely should be. Jesus back. man, can we shake our past? I heard Howard uh, Isley might be brought back, but 
Anyway, I mean, uh, listen, he's trying to bring, he's trying to bring the whole Wakanda team back, man. Ah, uh, Jesus, man. <laughs> but um, listen, man, you can't get too high, too low with assistant coaches. But man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Van Exel is the guy. You know, we, we'll see with with him and Fisdale. How how will they um help, especially Frank, especially Frank, a little oh, yeah. bit more so Moutier, um, and maybe even Trey on the defensive end. How do how do they get these guys to come out there shell and and uh, get gain that confidence, especially with Trey and Moody? I mean, with Frank and Moody, it, it's confidence. Um, Fizdale even said, you know, he knows with Frank uh, his his ability to be too selfish at times. So yeah, you know, maybe, maybe Nick the Quick might be that guy to help him show out a little bit. Yeah, man, look, chuck a little bit more, Frank. Yeah, uh, chuck a little bit more. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's do, your three. Do what I did. Do what I did. <laughs> You see my videos? Did I pass? Nick no. The quick. Yo, Nick the Quick been checking Stephen Bondy twice this week, bro. Oh, man. Twice this week he checked him, like, because Stephen Bondy, Stephen Bondy was the one that, that leaked the, um, he, he said that Van Axel was confirmed. And Tag, Van Axel man. I was like, yo, it's just rumors. And then Stephen Bondy also had released the article, basically the behind the scenes of what happened between Gasol and Fisdale. And yeah, Alex, so came back on Twitter like, "Yo, all Check that him. shit is false, man." What? So, yeah. So basically, he just checked him. Like, yeah, I think there was the part where um, they 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 went into the locker room and and, and said that you know Fizdale told Gasol he wishes he was more uh, or, or, or Gasol told Fizdale he wishes he was Popovich and, and yeah. <laughs> And, and Van X was like, yo, I was there, man. That shit never happened. So Disrespectful. Facts, he won't tell, tell somebody wish he was LeBron. And wish he was so, uh, yeah. yeah Stephen man. Bondi ain't having a good week this week, man. Nah. Stephen Bondi ain't having a good week. Hell of a little week goes to Stephen Bondi. Facts, facts. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how the, uh, how the coach is set continues to shape out. I don't know. It might be too late for Woodson. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I would have thought Woodson would have been here by now if that was the case. But I don't, I don't think Woodson is going to be on that staff. How crazy is that, yo? Because Woods didn't Woodson have uh Fizzle as an assistant coach? How crazy, Hawks. yeah. Like, why, yeah, you ain't, why you ain't let, let my man get a job, man? Like, come on, yeah, man. It's like, damn, I can't. I was your mentor, bro. You can't Facts, go, bro. Yeah, he, he doing <laughs> Woodson greasy, man. Woodson just out there, like, I'm available. I'm you, you know what I'm saying? Hey, facts, <laughs> don't be a line. Facts, facts. <laughs> Last but not least, Tuesday, May 15th, 7 30 Eastern. We find out where we will be drafting. The NBA lottery draft show will begin. Where will the Knicks pick? Is it going to be number nine? Will we get number one? Who knows? Most importantly, join us for the live stream right here on YouTube. Like I said, be in the beginning. Hit that subscribe and the notification bell on both our pages. Don't want to miss it. We're going to be nope. talking about the lottery. We're going to be talking about our prospects. Most importantly, we're going to take your live phone calls. You can join us on the YouTube chat. Yo, it's a dope show. Don't miss it. Tuesday, Definitely. May 15th, 7.30. Freeze those envelopes. Freeze those envelopes. <laughs> Let's get it. Like I said, man, we appreciate the support. May 15th, this Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Check us out. NBA Lottery live stream. The Knicks fan live stream. Call us up. Hit the YouTube chat. Air it out. Let us know what you think, man. Let us know who you want to draft. Hopefully, Word. we get lucky, man. Cross your fingers, man. Number one pick. Number we get, one pick. I feel it. We got to get lucky sometime, damn it. We got to get lucky, baby. Adam Silver, freeze those envelopes. Freeze it. Let's go. <laughs> Peace. One. Stackhouse. You did one Stackhouse. Yep. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. I, love, I love Fizz because that's his energy. Yeah. Plus, plus his old lady fine too, yo. Yo, shout out Mrs. Fisdale. Welcome to New York. <laughs> yes. Mrs. Fisdale. Yes. He but, has great but, taste. Uh, man, I, I feel like 